George Russell secures a quite unbelievable pole position for the 2024 Canadian Grand Prix after literally setting the exact same lap time as Max Verstappen. Elsewhere, Ferrari's Monaco highs are very much shattered. Further questions are asked about Sergio Perez and RB confirm Yuki Tsunoda for 2025. From racingnews365.com, my name is Nick Golding and I'm joined very late in the day, or should I say early in the morning, by lead editor Ian Parks. Ian, it was a quite incredible qualifying at the Canadian Grand Prix. The only thing that could separate Russell and Verstappen was the fact that Russell set the 1 minute 12 flat a few minutes before the Dutchman. We had a feeling it was going to be a special qualifying session and as always, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve delivered. Absolutely. Tremendous qualifying. Shout out to our Dutch colleagues on RacingNews365.nl. Love their thinking. Max sets fastest time in qualifying, but not on pole. Just uh, tremendous qualifying. And the way it worked out in Q3, we saw George Russell um, post a 112 dead on his first run in Q3. And bizarrely, due to a remarkable change in conditions in the space of a few minutes across that uh, across that 12 minute session max was the only driver to improve his lap time from the first run to the second run and his second run exactly matched george a 112 dead but because george was the first driver to set the time he naturally gets the pole position only the second time in his Formula One career. So hats off to George, hats off to Mercedes, because they've been talking a good game for a few Grand Prix now, saying, we're improving, we're improving. And you're thinking, is this Mercedes just following the patterns of old from what they've said over the past couple of seasons since the introduction of these new regulations in 2022? But this time, they actually seem to be delivering on their word. They've added uh, elements to that car over the past few Grand Prix. We know a new front wing in particular came on board in Monaco. Lewis had that front wing for this. Uh, we has that front wing for this weekend at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve, and it looked like he was going to be the favourite, not George Russell to land that pole position, bearing in mind the way he performed in final practice. But instead, it was George that has come out on top with a quite tremendous pole position. And it's given us a great grid going forward into this, what should hopefully be a really good Canadian Grand Prix now. You mentioned there that actually, you know, Hamilton was really the favourite for pole because he was just over three tenths clear of the entire field in FP3, which, given how short the lap is at the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve was a big shock. He's only starting, though, down in seventh, albeit only just over two tenths of a second behind, which is still, you know, incredibly close. But he was a driver who actually complained, like several others, about a sudden just lack of grip in qualifying compared to free practice three. He's going to be really disappointed, given his track record at the circuit as well. This is starting now to become a real trend with Lewis. This weekend in particular, this has really highlighted it for him. He's often talked about a good feeling with the car coming out of practice and being relatively positive. Friday practice I'm referring to, obviously, and being relatively positive. And then all of a sudden, just things have changed for him completely in qualifying. He said exactly the same thing again following this qualifying session. Just a complete change with the car from what he felt in practice to what he's felt in qualifying. And you got to wonder, what is going on there? Toto Wolf, listening to his comments post-qualifying, was equally as baffled, in fairness. They couldn't understand what was going on. Because as you've rightly pointed out, he was over three tenths of a second quicker in final practice. The conditions were perfect compared to what we saw on Friday. But nonetheless, Lewis had a really good feeling with his car coming out of Friday practice, despite the conditions that had really turned things or turned the field upside down. Nobody really set him what were relevant lap times. But we saw a, re a good, dry practice run 
in FP3, Lewis looked as if he was the favourite. And even in uh, the Q2, he and George were first and second. George was up by pretty much just about a quarter of a second. And it looked at that stage as if it was going to be a Mercedes 1-2, regardless of the order, coming out of Q3. But that was nowhere near the case. George, yes, nailed that first run, even on scrub tyres. That just gives an idea uh, just how much the conditions changed because they went out on fresh softs in that second run and were unable to improve. But Lewis, seventh on the grid, that's his worst qualifying grid slot for any Canadian Grand Prix in which he's taken part because he's had six pole positions. This is an absolute favourite of Lewis Hamilton, this circuit, and it just did not happen for him in Q3 for whatever reason. He's baffled. Toto Wolff is baffled. But as I say, this has become a real trend for him now, coming out of practice in a qualifying, and it just not happening for him. And I guess his real big hope for even a podium on Sunday is for the heavens to open, which is potentially going to happen. It's qualifying today. It was supposed to be wet and it turned out to be completely dry. So who knows what will happen. We need to talk about the driver alongside George Russell on the front row. Max Verstappen was my bold prediction for pole position. The Dutchman had a very difficult Friday with the ERS problems, was still complaining Saturday morning of the car jumping, a phrase we've heard quite a few times. But when it matters most, Verstappen P2, Sergio Perez out in Q1, P16, just a few days after signing a new two-year contract. It it raises the question once again, though, why have Red Bull given him this deal when it, it's another setback? Look, you know my thoughts on this, Nick. Well. I've, I've aired it previously <laughs> on our updates. I aired it in the podcast uh, at the start of the week. I firmly believed that given what was happening with Checo over the previous Grand Prix, that Red Bull would take a step back and think, right, hold on a second. Let's just see where this is going with him because all of a sudden he's just started to lose his feel and confidence with this car. And lo and behold, here we go again. It's the second Q1 in a row in which he's failed to escape and in between they've given him this new two-year contract surely a degree of common sense would have told you but as I say bear in mind what was starting to happen through the month of May into June at the Grand Prix that had taken place that you would just think for a second and just take a pause and just see what is going on with him of course don't get me wrong Red Bull have got far more information than we have from the inside compared to us on the outside. And they will have a better understanding as to what specifically has been going wrong with Checo. But for a long time, I've always stated that they should just wait. And I believe that that's what they should have been doing or should be doing, should I say. This is, it came as a real surprise in the end. I, I genuinely was surprised that they announced this new two-year contract as well. Not even just a one-year extension, but a two-year, taking Checo into the new regulations. Something somewhere, be it money from Checo's sponsors or whatever, has pl- for me, has played a part in this. And as I say, Checo has brought on board many sponsors. Fair play to him for that. He's got strong backers they bring with them a considerable amount of funds has that played a part it's been said to me in the past no because Red Bull has the allure of Red Bull given its championship winning position means that they can bring whoever on board I'm sure they've probably got a plethora of sponsors wanting to join them but nevertheless you've got to wonder just why for me personally why Checo has been retained with a new two-year contract. I'm surprised by it. And this, for me, his performance today has validated that. Well, he he called it a total disaster. This is a good point, I guess, to talk about the driver that is also remaining with the Red Bull family for a further year, Yuki Tsunoda, the guy who has performed brilliantly this season, has clearly matured as an individual as well, something he was kind of previously 
criticised Ford for its outbursts over the radio. The announcement was made by RB 30 minutes before qualifying. Interesting timing to start off with. Um, a headache for us, may I please add. But it's interesting because obviously it's an option that was in his contract that RB have activated and that he had a one-year option to continue 2025. And it's a weird one because there were some talks about potentially Snowden wanting to stick with the Honda family. I know this is only for 2025 and the new regs and the Honda Red Bull split at 2026. But are you surprised to see him sticking with or for RB to have taken the option of extending his deal, given that you know they've now got a choice to make between Daniel Ricciardo or Liam Lawson. No, I'm not surprised. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, you know, as soon as Red Bull announced Perez, it, the obvious no-brainer was for RB to then come out and retain Sonoda. He's performed reasonably well, uh, you know, over the first eight races of this season. It's it's probably the, the strongest start he has had um, across his, his four seasons with uh, with the Faenza-based squad, bearing in mind the different names in, in which it's uh, in which it's had over these, uh, even over the four years that he's been there. So he's going to have a fifth season. It's no surprise. It's only a one-year extension. Yeah. So that for me was a bit of a surprise. I would have, have assumed they would have given him a two-year deal just to take him into 2026 with the new regulations. So now, but as you've rightly stated there, Nick, it now comes down to what appears to be the straight fight for that second seat, Daniel Ricciardo against Liam Lawson. Now, all information that I've received is that Daniel will ultimate, ultimately be retained. And it's Leo that is, Leo? Liam, that is unfortunately going to be wondering where his future lies because he's had this reserve role with the RB family and is he really going to want to sit on the sidelines for yet another season and hope that he might have an opportunity for 26? Bear in mind, as I say, Sunoda's only got this one-year contract. It's going to be a real tough ask for him to do that. What's been really intriguing, though, is that um, Sky Sports F1 in the UK has been speaking with Laura Mekies during the course of the practice and qualifying sessions. As we know, Sky often picks a team principal to liaise with during practice qualifying and, and races over a particular Grand Prix weekend. And it's been very noticeable, sat alongside Laura Mekies in the Pratt perch on the pit wall, has been Liam Lawson. So you would assume that he still has some part to play in the Red Bull family, is it going to be him in that second seat? As I say, I don't think so from the information I've received. Um, I believe it's going to be Daniel to be retained. And he produced an absolutely stonking qualifying lap, by the way. To answer all his critics, Jacques Villeneuve being one of them, Jacques was incredibly outspoken. What the hell is he doing in F1? Why is he there? He's never done anything since he left Red Bull. He absolutely laid into Daniel, left, right, and uppercut. And But Daniel's come out fighting, and that was a great lap from him today, out qualifying Snowder. So fair play to him. He's now got to follow it up in the race, of course. Well, that leads on quite nicely to the top 10 from qualifying. It is obviously Russell on pole with Verstappen alongside on the front row, with a McLaren second row of Norris in third, Oscar Piastri in fourth, Ricardo, who have just spoken about his P5, an amazing performance when he really needs it. Fernando Alonso in P6 with Hamilton P7, Sonoda P8, the local boy Lance Stroll in ninth, with Alex Albon in P10. And the reason I've spoken about the top 10 now is, is because quite clearly there are two drivers and one team in particular not there. Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, P11, Carlos Sainz, P12. We came into the weekend wondering if Leclerc was going to take his Monaco confidence into Canada. You know, if Ferrari were going to be the team to beat this weekend, they're not only not the team to beat, but actually even scoring some big points is looking like a really, really big ask. Absolutely staggering. We came out of Monaco talking about the possibility of Leclerc in particular and Ferrari being title contenders for the Drivers and Constructors Championships. 
And then they come out and produce this performance. It was clear in FP3. Yeah. Bear in mind, as I say, you couldn't really call what was happening in FP1 and FP2, given the, the array of conditions that unfolded. But it was clear in FP3. And Leclerc pointedly stated at the very end of FP3, we don't have the pace, do we? Something going on there with tyre warm-up, uh, quite evidently. They've just not been able to get the tyre in the right window at all so far. And that was quite clearly the case again across qualifying. Just nowhere, really nowhere. And you've got to wonder now about, are they really championship contenders? Have we talked them up too soon? Because we've all talked a good game. They talked a good game. I, I remember seeing a clip of Charles coming into this weekend and he was asked, do you feel that you're in the hunt? And he said, I've got to believe it. Well, what is he now going to be believing? Because how can you come out of Monaco so strong, so performant, so dominant from his perspective with what he'd done to then be 11th on the grid at this particular circuit, which should have been a good one for them. Although you've got to think, going back to last season's qualifying, they were equally, actually they were just marginally a little bit better last season, not that much, but equally as bad, to use that word, as they have been in this qualifying session. They were great in the race. They had great race pace. And both Charles and, Car and Carlos managed to score reasonably good points. They've got to hope that they can do something similar because otherwise this weekend they're going to be coming out of it with Carlos, sorry, with Charles and Carlos both considerably adrift of Max should he score good points and even further adrift of Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship. So a lot to make up. Very interesting weekend for them. A lot of questions to be answered, that's for sure. And I suppose a bit like Hamilton, you know, Leclerc and Sainz might both possibly be looking towards the heavens, some rain on Sunday, just to open up some strategies, give them a chance, yeah. a few instants. I mean, Sunday is going to be so difficult to predict. So on that note, Ian, uh, a bold prediction, please, for the Canadian Grand Prix. <laughs> Yeah, I said, Oscar Piastri, I said Oscar Piastri on pole position, and and I thought it, for a time he was he was looking good, um, but it it just never never materialised. Uh, McLaren second row though, and They're I there. think they are there, and I think I'm I'm going to go one of those guys. <clears throat> excuse me, one of those guys. For, oh gosh, one of those guys for the Grand Prix win. Definitely. Okay, so. Right, so McLaren win. I'm gonna. I was gonna say a Lando Norris win, but as you've taken that, I'm gonna. I'm looking at the top ten now. I'm gonna go. I think we're gonna get rain, and if we get rain, I think we're gonna have a Daniel Ricciardo podium. Ooh, it was just the, like the way it. that like the it. way that he has been spoken about by a certain individual. I think that would just be quite fitting, especially as he is on the commentary team, obviously for Sky Sports this weekend, and it, it, yeah. Yeah, it would be quite interesting. But anyways, for those who are watching this video, please make sure to let us know your predictions and what you think and have made of the Canadian Grand Prix so far in the comment section below. This has been the Racing News 365.com F1 update. We will see you all for the race on Sunday. See you later. As always, take care, folks.